Thanks for tuning into Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm stoked to showcase the Wayward Riders Louise version 2 bikepacking seat harness. I've been putting it through the paces for many months now on multiple bikes and all types of terrain, so come inside and let's see how it performed. First off, who are the Wayward Riders? They're a two-person operation based out of Wellington, New Zealand. Andy has traveled the globe bikepacking. Along the way, he tinkered with custom saddle harnesses, which led to the initial Louise design. Vic is his good friend and former roommate, and she makes baby clothes, so sewing the harnesses is pretty easy for her. As of now, the Louise is the only product they make. It's named after the legendary Louise Sutherland. In a nutshell, she was a Kiwi cyclist who rode over 60,000 kilometers while touring through 54 countries, much of which was on a bike she bought at a yard sale while towing a two-wheel trailer. She also raised $200,000 for medical aid in clinics for people she met in the Amazon and other areas around the world. Needless to say, she's an incredible namesake, but does this harness live up to her prowess? When the package showed up in the mail, it seriously felt like an empty box. I had done my research and knew what to expect, but when I opened it, I was still baffled at how minimal it was. A piece of unbranded black plastic, some webbing, and a couple buckles. So simple it's scary. First, let's talk price. As of now, the Louise can be yours for 95 New Zealand dollars, which roughly equates to 69 US dollars. Currently, it's only offered through the Wayward Riders website. So if you want this in America, you need to tack on international shipping, which brings the price to about 87 US dollars out the door, which still doesn't include a dry bag. It's easy to balk at the price, considering it's just poly pro plastic with generic parts. But you've got to remember some of its counterparts cost almost double. And upon closer inspection, it's a meticulously designed piece of plastic that Andy spent countless hours refining over the years. You're also supporting a grassroots business and fellow bikepackers in the process, so it's a win-win. In terms of weight, it doesn't get much better for gram counters. Andy claims the rig weighs 170 grams, and according to my park scale, it comes in even lighter at 163. That's pretty impressive. For comparison, an 8-liter Revelate Terrapin weighs almost double at 369 grams. Depending on which dry bag you go with, you can have a complete setup for under 230 grams. So if light and fast is your jam, I'm pretty sure your ears are perking up already. If you're not familiar with the first Louise harness, you might be curious what changes have been made to the V2 that set it apart from the original. It came out in 2019 and cost around 62 bucks, so it's a few dollars more now, fair enough. The V1 Louise was designed around six to nine liter dry bags. It now boasts a sweet spot of five to 10 liters, but they've successfully tested it from a range of three to 13 liters. For a seat bag, it doesn't get much more versatile than that. If you don't already have a dry bag, they've listed some of their favorites on the website. The V2 shape has also been refined to fit better on a wider variety of seat rails. In addition, the cradle itself has been elongated under the bag. It offers more support and allows it to be cinched up closer to the saddle, especially with smaller bags. This reduces the necessary clearance between the tire and the seat rails to seven inches versus eight inches from the previous version. And you only need about two inches of exposed seat post to attach the harness. Another tweak is the straps now tighten via two contact points on the underside, whereas it used to pull from only one. This adds stability and brings the maximum load recommendation up to five and a half pounds from four pounds previously. Another small detail is the inclusion of rubber O-rings near the buckles. You can tuck your straps into these so they don't flop around. A thoughtful touch. The Louise came with some installation instructions and there's also a video on their website, so I won't go through the process now. But it's quick and intuitive and easy to swap back and forth between bikes. Once mounted, I tested the cradle with two different dry bags I already owned. A five liter outdoor research dry bag and an eight liter Cita Summit bag weighing a scant 35 grams. That's a crazy light 200 gram total weight for an eight liter capacity option. We already know it's light, but that means nothing if it can't handle the rigors of extended bike packing. We'll get to that in a sec, but if you're curious, here's what I packed for testing. I crammed my 45 degree sleeping quilt and a UL bivy into the five liter bag. When using the eight liter bag, I packed a quilt and bivy along with an inflatable pillow and an ultralight puffy jacket. Also, if you're curious, the weight of the eight liter system, including gear came to 1218 grams or approximately 2.7 pounds. Although the five liter bag fit fine in the harness, the eight liter bag fit like a glove as it should since it's right in the middle of the load range. I rode this system for months on my fat bike, gravel bike, and full squish mountain bike. I beat it up on the most rugged terrain in the most inclement weather, and I have to say overall, I couldn't be more pleased with it. I was scared that it would be flimsy or start to fall apart after rigorous use. After all, it's just a T-shaped piece of 1.4 millimeter thick polypropylene plastic. 
but it's still right here serving me as well as it did on day one, and that says a lot. An eight liter bag is ideal for most of my adventures, but it's nice to know I can increase capacity by swapping to a larger bag, which is way easier and cheaper than switching setups completely. I really like my three liter Revelate Shrew for day rides, but for anything more than that, this is pretty much a quiver killer. In terms of performance, it was dang near flawless. Once I cinched up the straps, they never came loose, even bombing down the most rocky and rowdy bits of the CT. To this day, I haven't had to tighten or readjust the straps once. A major knock on most seat bags is the swaying factor, but I never felt it wiggle or wobble. As you can see in the drone footage, it stays pretty tucked and tight. I like the rubber donut that hugs the seat post and how easily it snugs up with the nano strap. It adapts to pretty much all seat post sizes. It won't mar or scuff your seat post or dropper stanchion the way Velcro straps can. Speaking of dropper posts, I still don't own one. I know, I know, laugh at me all you want. That said, the Louise is designed for dropper posts, again adding to its versatility. There are other dropper post bags that require slightly less tire clearance, like the Ripsy, Gondola, Vol, and Black Dragon. Those need around five to six inches of tire clearance versus the seven required for the Louise. But they're all pretty spendy and only hold around seven liters max. So unless you have a really limited amount of tire to saddle clearance, the Louise should be fine. But if you do find your rubbing, you can try a smaller dry bag and really cinch it up. You can also swap the rubber donut for a wolf tooth valet. This can limit your dropper post travel to keep from smacking your tire. Anywho, what else, what else? Oh yeah, I also noticed the back of my thigh slightly hitting the bag while climbing on my mountain bike. I reached out to Andy and he reminded me about the rubber spacers that came with it. Duh, I slipped on the spacers and no more contact. Also, the rear strap comes very long and likes to dangle. You can cut it down or just tuck it in, which is what I do. Or put some reflective tape on it and let it flap around at night to freak people out. The buckles are generic and can be found at most hardware or camping stores. This is nice for field repair if you snap one while out on a trip. Also, if you manage to destroy any other parts of the harness, a ski strap should fix you up in a jam. And cleanup is super simps. You can wipe off dirt and mud with some degreaser or water in a rag and it looks like new. Voila. In a nutshell, I'm super stoked to have this in my bikepacking arsenal. Minimal, versatile, robust, lightweight, and lightning fast to install and remove. Pretty much everything I want in a seat bag system. Honestly, it has me scratching my head wondering why didn't I think of that? And it's the ultimate example of the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. So with that said, I'm curious what you think about it. Are you currently using the Louise or thinking of getting one? If not, what are you using or looking to buy? Please leave your thoughts and any questions down below. If you enjoyed this video and got some useful nuggets, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button. I upload fresh bike packing and mountain biking content every week, so please consider subscribing to the channel and tapping the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, get back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, get back, pay it forward.